Just a few million years ago, in the Pleistocene of southern China, a predator was on the prowl. This animal was the ancestor of the big cats, who thanks to their incredible power and strength, are the most successful carnivores in the world. Whilst other top predators, like bears and crocodiles, evolved tens or even hundreds of millions of years ago, big cats are a new addition to the planet's ecosystems. Which is why it's so strange that hardly any of their fossils have been found making their evolution one of the greatest mysteries in paleontology. So how did these animals come to dominate the food chain, and could they disappear within our lifetime? The story starts 32 million years ago, when the ancestors of cats and linsangs diverged, resembling a mix of a cat and a mongoose. Linsangs give us insights on what early felines may have looked like, and since linsangs live in Southeast Asia's rainforests, it's almost certain that cats first evolved there too, although the first cat to appear in the fossil record comes from much further north in Mongolia. The remains come from a species known as Proilurus, also known as the dawn cat. Although the jump between linsangs and this early feline is a significant one, we can see some similarities, such as a long tail and a slender body, and since forests covered much of the world at the time, the dawn cat was able to spread as far as North America and Europe. After the dawn cat, the fossil record becomes interesting, not because of what it contains, but because of what it doesn't. During a period of time, from 25 to 18 million years ago, not a single cat can be found in North America's fossil record. There are many theories for the so-called cat gap. Perhaps it was because of competition from amphiocyanids, hypercarnivorous relatives of dogs, climate change induced deforestation, or maybe they did survive in North America, and for whatever reason, their remains were never fossilized. The truth is, no one really knows. The cat gap came to a close with the arrival of Pseudoalurus on the continent, a possible descendant of the dawn cat. Pseudoalurus laid the groundwork for future species, passing on adaptations like sharp claws and night vision, traits that enabled them to coexist with other carnivores, during a time where competition was higher than ever before. Pseudoalurus's descendants eventually diversified into a wide range of species. One of the major groups that appeared were the saber-toothed cats. Belonging to a subfamily known as Machirodontinae, the saber-toothed cats diverged from other species in the Miocene epoch, millions of years before the big cats first evolved. Their iconic teeth came as an adaptation to hunting thick-skinned megafauna like mastodons and ground sloths. Despite their teeth obviously distinguishing them, they shared many similarities to modern day big cats. The fossil record suggests they first originated in what is now Turkey, before spreading across the world. Over time, their numbers declined, and by the end of the Ice Age, only Smilodon and Homotherium survived. Although unfortunately, they too disappeared 11,000 years ago when humans arrived in the Americas. But how did the big cats survive? Whilst many of the large predators disappeared, the story of the big cats begins when Pantherinae branched off from all other cats. The Pantherinae quickly started perfecting the skills that would help them to survive for millions of years to come. Another major event came 4.5 million years ago, when the Pantherinae split in two. One of these lineages is Neophelis, or the Clouded Leopards. Compared to true big cats, these animals became smaller and more agile, helping them to climb. With the largest canine to body size ratio of any species, they're the closest thing we have to saber-toothed cats. But these teeth probably aren't used for what you think. They didn't develop them for their ambush hunting style. Instead, they evolved such long canines for clinging onto prey whilst climbing trees. These adaptations allowed them to spread across Southeast Asia's rainforests and diverge into two separate species, both of which are declining as a result of the fur trade, but they are nowhere near as threatened as some members of the Panthera genus. Whilst the clouded leopard kept its smaller body, big cats grew much larger, a trait that makes them quite possibly the most feared predators in the world. The oldest known member, 
Panthera blythei appeared just 4 million years ago in Tibet. Very recent in evolutionary terms. In a case of convergent evolution, this animal evolved a similar morphology to snow leopards. Although there's a small chance they're related, it's hard to know for sure because of the extremely patchy fossil record. Whether this was because of geology or their low population densities, it means their origin remains a mystery. And out of all the big cats, the tiger might have the most puzzling evolution as we only have a few fossils to go off of. One of these was found in northwestern China. These aren't fossils from modern tigers. Instead, they come from a separate, now extinct species known as the Longdan tiger. It's unclear if this was a relative of the tiger or not, but it was certainly a similar looking animal and possibly the tiger's ancestor. Fossils from 2 million years ago on the island of Java give us the next clues. These remains come from modern tigers and are the oldest of their kind. Following their possible origin on the Malay archipelago, they managed to reach as far as southern China within 100,000 years. As their expansion continued, they managed to reach the Philippines, Borneo and even Japan. Although their distribution contracted during the Ice Age, another expansion took place around 10,000 years ago. Tigers from northern China migrated north, becoming the Siberian tiger, and far into the west, becoming the Caspian tiger. Since its peak at the start of the Holocene, the tiger has been the victim of extremely high levels of poaching. The result of this hunting has restricted them to just 7% of their former range, reducing their population to a low 3,200 in 2012. Although due to the efforts of several countries, their numbers have rebounded to 5,500. This makes the tiger the only big cat whose population is increasing. But the same can't be said about the leopard. Although once the most successful, ranging across pretty much the entire old world, hunting has restricted their population to possibly as few as 50,000. The first leopards appeared in Eastern Africa over 2 million years ago and quickly spread far and wide due to their extraordinary adaptability. Their adaptations, especially their ability to climb, their relatively small size, camouflage, stealth, and nocturnal lifestyle enabled them to survive in almost any habitat, from frigid tundra to tropical rainforest and deserts. And whilst leopards were the most successful big cat, lions are the most popular and they too were extremely successful in the Pleistocene. First originating in Africa, they managed to extend their dominion well into Asia. Around 470,000 years ago, a population of lions migrated into Europe. Adapting to the colder conditions, they became larger, lost their manes, and grew denser, lighter hair, becoming the cave lion, helping it to spread to southern England in the west and Siberia in the east. Although it's unclear why losing its mane helped the cave lion to survive, it likely had something to do with social dynamics. Around 165,000 years ago, lions from Alaska dispersed south, evolving into the American lion, which once ranged deep into Central America. Unfortunately, both of these species became extinct at the end of the Ice Age. This left the jaguar as the only true big cat in the Americas. Although like many of the other species, their lineage originated in Africa before spreading into Europe. The European jaguar following in the footsteps of the cave lion, migrated into the Americas before going extinct. The jaguar adapted by developing the most powerful bite and body of any cats, which enabled them to cover one of the largest ranges of any carnivores, which up until 200 or so years ago, included most of the southwestern USA, South America, and all of Central America. Although jaguars occasionally cross over into America, these represent individual males' seasonal migrations, which are becoming more difficult as their corridors are fragmented, and as jaguar numbers are only increasing in two countries, they will likely disappear from most of their current range. Far away from the jungles of South America, in the mountains of Asia, lives the most elusive big cat, the snow leopard. Becoming specialized to high altitude environments, snow leopards have both the smallest range and population, with perhaps as few as 3,920 left on the planet. 
making the future of this enigmatic species uncertain. You might have expected me to talk about the cheetah, but they are actually part of the Fenene lineage and thus not true big cats. Cheetahs got their start three and a half million years ago in southeastern Africa. Early cheetahs were larger and less adapted for speed, but after millions of years of hunting antelope, cheetahs became faster and faster and today can reach speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. Along with the cheetah, there is one more feline which is often called a big cat too, the puma, who happens to be the closest living relative of the cheetah. Pumas have one of the largest ranges of any terrestrial mammal, spanning from Canada to the southern tip of Patagonia. And except for eastern North America and a few patches of South America, they still cover much of their dominion. This is thanks to their incredible adaptability and stealth, which allows them to coexist with many other large predators. Although the largest predators live in the ocean, whales. And if you want to find out more, make sure to check out this video.